it is always a dilemma. For us, there's more particular in tax specification and feature when choosing which version of a certain product we wish to get. And this goes from minor differences such as storage to a screen or processor. And this choice doesn't come easy when companies price their incremental upgrade from a mere $50 to $100. Feel that the 32 gb in the basic iPad is too small? Just a small $100, you'll get yourself a 122 gb version, 4 times the storage. But wait, since you already paid $429 for a 122 gb basic iPad, why not just add another $170 for the all new iPad Air? With a newer or more superior design and an all powerful A14 chip. I know you are paying an extra $107 for it, but just think about it. $107 get you all the latest and greatest. You get the idea. The question is, when and where you should stop? That's the question. To show this, I'm going to give my opinion on this matter using this basic 10.2 inch iPad and my iPad Pro and discuss the difference between these two devices and should you get one or another or you should settle somewhere in the middle. Currently, I do not have the new iPad Air on hand but almost everything I mentioned about the iPad Pro should also apply to the iPad Air. Just an obvious spoiler, the iPad Pro win on all category except the price and value department. That's the point of this video. Is it worth it? Without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's get the hardware part out of the way. As I do think you guys have gone through the specification of these two devices, so I won't beat around the bush. Both devices have an almost similar screen size, but the difference in quality is quite huge. Normal user might not notice, but the non-laminated glass will catch our attention right away as a con. But is this such an eyesore compared to the more superior iPad Air or the iPad Pro screen? In my opinion, no. I talk more about this in my review of the basic iPad. Links in the description below. The screen is fine. And without focusing on the bezel or the air gap between the screen, this is a nice screen. So don't let all those fancy terms like liquid retina display push you to get a more expensive iPad just for the screen. But if you are doing things like photo editing, a better screen with better color reproduction might be worth it to you. But that's only apply if you are more serious in photo editing. For most of us editing home video or photo, the screen on the iPad is more than enough. Aside from the screen, processor is also an important factor. As better the processor, the faster the device, equal for a more future-proof device. But due to Apple track record in supporting multiple generations of the device, the A12 chip in a basic iPad is estimated to last for an extra 3 years from the time of this video published. But how does the A12 chip perform? To make things more relatable, this is the same chip in the iPhone XS. I currently own an iPhone X, which is a generation behind the iPhone XS, and it still feels snappy and everything is smooth. This iPhone X doesn't feel like a 3 year old device. In terms of gaming, it is quite smooth for any casual games like Dragon Ball Legend. But for graphic intensive games such as Genshin Impact, you have to drop this setting a few notch so that it will be more playable. Aside from gaming, everything you do with the iPad is smooth and I can assure you, you will stay the same for years to come. Switch our perspective to iPad Pro. The A12Z is blazing fast. And to prove it, what else would be a better showcase for its performance other than exporting a 4K video? As you can see, exporting multiple source of 4K video is faster than real time. This speaks a lot of the performance of the A12Z. So, don't get fooled that the Z in the iPad Pro is just a spec bump from A12. The benchmark and the result will speak for it. But if you are using the iPad solely for entertainment, this is where the choice will get a bit hard. The iPad Pro is equipped with a superior screen and quad speaker, which will significantly enhance your entertainment experience. But after using the basic iPad for some time, the downward firing speaker actually quite surprised me on how loud it sounds and surprisingly clear. Watching video in landscape mode is a bit awkward, as the sound it just comes from one direction, but it doesn't distract me from enjoying the content. But there goes without saying iPad Pro is a clear winner here, but by how much? If you factor in value and price, it all depends on your financial situation. And do you need all those fancy features? It is all depend on the usage. Without diving too much into details such as storage, RAM, or even touch or face ID, which I consider not a major factor in choosing either of it. But if you're planning to use your iPad doing basic stuff like video consumption or email exchange, then the basic iPad will be more than sufficient. But if you need anything else, 
the iPad Air or the Pro might interest you more and depend on your disposable income and the years you plan on using the iPad. These are just some of my thoughts when comparing the lowest end of the iPad and the highest end iPad Pro. How will you choose? Leave a comment down below the like button and thanks for watching. Ciao!